We are coming to you live from our campus here in Mountain View. Recently, we added 150,000 kilometers of bike lanes in Google Maps. We are also introducing two new features. First, new eco-friendly routes. Using our understanding of road and traffic conditions, Google Maps will soon give you the option to take the most fuel-efficient route. Second, safer routing. Powered by AI, Maps can identify road, weather, and traffic conditions where you're likely to have to suddenly break. Smart Canvas. The launch date is just two months away, so Wadu starts a document and quickly adds a brainstorm table. With app mentions, he pulls in the right people and generates a checklist to assign action items. New assisted writing capabilities in Google Workspace offer suggestions so you can communicate more effectively. Starting today, you can easily present the doc, sheet, or slide you're working on directly into a Google Meet call. And this fall, we're excited to bring Meet directly into docs, sheets, and slides for the first time. This will enable teams like Adoos to actually see and hear each other while they're collaborating. We've also made it easier to customize views that when Adoo presents to the rest of his team, he can easily arrange people's faces to gauge their reactions while staying focused on his content. And his colleagues across the globe can follow along with live captions, even translations, into their native languages. Today, I'm excited to share our latest breakthrough in natural language understanding, Lambda. It's a language model for dialogue applications. And it's open domain, which means it's designed to converse on any topic. Let's break down what made it feel so natural. First, learn concepts. As you saw, the model talked about the New Horizon spacecraft and the coldness of space. Lambda synthesized these concepts from its training data. These concepts were not hand programmed in the model. Lambda answered with sensible responses, keeping the dialogue open-ended. We need to build models that allow people to naturally ask questions across different types of information. These are called multimodal models. Let's say we want a model to recognize all facets of a road trip. That could mean the words road trip, written or spoken in any language, images, sounds and videos, and concepts associated with road trips, such as weather and directions. So you can imagine one day planning a road trip and asking Google to find a route with beautiful mountain views. You can also use this to search for something within a video. For example, when you say, show me the part where the lion roars at sunset, we will get you to that exact moment in a video. Our compute infrastructure is how we drive and sustain these advances. And tensor processing units are a big part of that. Today, I'm excited to announce our next generation, the TPU V4. TPUs are connected together into supercomputers called pods. A single V4 pod contains 4,096 V4 chips. And each pod has 10x the interconnect bandwidth per chip at scale compared to any other networking technology. This is the fastest system we've ever deployed at Google and a historic milestone for us. Quantum computing represents a fundamental shift because it harnesses the properties of quantum mechanics. Today, we're announcing four new upgrades that make our password manager more helpful. First, we're making it easier than ever to get started with a simple tool that imports passwords saved in other password managers. Next, we'll have deeper integration across both Chrome and Android, so your secure passwords go with you from sites to apps. Third, automatic password alerts will let you know if we detect any of your saved passwords have become compromised in a third-party breach. And lastly, what I'm especially excited about, a quick fix feature in Chrome where the assistant will help you navigate directly to your compromised accounts and change your passwords in seconds. We also know that some controls are most helpful when they're built right into the app, like when we added an incognito mode in Search, Maps, and YouTube. Today, we're announcing a few new controls that you'll see in our most popular apps. So now, just tap your profile picture to access your menu and immediately delete recent search history from your account. Now, when you see places you visited in your timeline, we'll remind you that it's because you turned on location history, which you can easily turn off right there on your timeline. And lastly, we're rolling out locked folder and photos, first on Google Pixels and coming to more Android devices throughout the year. Today, 
I'm excited to share how we'll be bringing some of these research advances to Google Search with a multitask unified model, or MUM, as we like to call it. MUM is a thousand times more powerful than BERT. With its language understanding capabilities, it would know you're looking to compare two mountains and also understand that prepare could include things like fitness training for the terrain and hiking gear for fall weather. MUM can transfer language across multiple languages to give you a richer, more comprehensive answer. Because MUM is multimodal, it can understand different types of information simultaneously. So now imagine taking a photo of your hiking boots and asking, can I use these to hike Mount Fuji? Mom would be able to understand the content of the image and the intent behind your query, let you know that your hiking boots would just work fine, and then point you to a list of recommended gear in a Mount Fuji blog. Three years ago, with Live View and Google Maps, we were the first ones to use AR at scale to help see where to go, with signs and arrows overlaid on the real world. You'll be able to access Live View right from the map and instantly see details about the shops and the restaurants around you, including how busy they are, recent reviews, and photos of those popular dishes. We'll point you towards key landmarks and places that are important for you, like the direction of your hotel. We're bringing it indoors to help you get around some of the hardest to navigate buildings, like airports, transit stations, and malls. You can now see where the sidewalks, the crosswalks, the pedestrian islands are. So we're making the map more dynamic and more tailored, highlighting the most relevant information exactly when you need it. Now we're expanding this capability from specific places like restaurants and shops to neighborhoods with the feature called area busyness. With area busyness, you'll be able to understand at a glance if it's the right time for you to go based on how busy that part of the city is in real time. It's great to be back on campus talking with you all about Google Photos. Soon, we're launching a new way to look back that we're calling Little Patterns. This feature uses machine learning to translate photos into a series of numbers and then compares how visually or conceptually similar these images are. When we find a set of three or more photos with similarities such as shape or color, we'll surface them as a pattern. When we take a photo, most of us actually take two to three photos of the same shot, just to make sure we get the right one. Cinematic Moments will take these near-duplicate images and use neural networks to synthesize the movement between image A and image B. We interpolate the photos and fill in the gaps by creating new frames. And the cool thing about this effect is it can work on any pair of images, whether they were captured on Android, iOS, or scanned from a photo album. We heard from you that controls can be helpful for anyone who has been through a tough life event, breakup, or loss. And soon, you'll be able to remove a single photo from a memory, rename the memory, or remove it entirely. We're making all these controls easy to find, so you can make changes in just a few taps. To make smartphone photography truly for everyone, we've been working with a group of industry experts to build a more accurate and inclusive camera. We're making auto white balance adjustments to algorithmically reduce stray light, to bring out natural brown tones, and prevent overbrightening and desaturation of darker skin tones. We're also able to reflect curly and wavy hair types more accurately in selfies with new algorithms that better separate a person from the background in any image. To acknowledge that emotion is essential and that beauty is personal. A new design that includes you as a co-creator, letting you transform the look and feel of all your apps by generating personal material palettes that mix color science with a designer's eye. Material U comes first to Google Pixel this fall, including all of your favorite Google apps. So let's start by taking a look at our new UI for Android. Let me show you what we've done with color. We've got something new planned for Google Pixel using what we call color extraction. The system creates a custom palette based on the colors in my photo. The result is a one-of-a-kind design, just for you. And you'll see it first on Google Pixel in the fall. Starting from the lock screen, the design is more playful with dynamic lighting. Pick up your phone, and it lights up from the bottom of your screen. 
Press the power button to wake up the phone instead, and the light ripples out from your touch. Even the clock is in tune with you. When you don't have any notifications, it appears larger on the lock screen, so you know you're all caught up. And now, you can invoke the Google Assistant by long pressing the power button, making it easier than ever to harness the power of Google. We greatly reduce lock contention in key system services, such as Activity, Window, and Package Manager. And the team also reduced the CPU time of Android's system server by a whopping 22%. Simply put, the most secure devices run on Android. And with Android 12, we're going even further to keep your information safe. To give people more transparency and control, we've created a new privacy dashboard that shows you what type of data was accessed and when. This dashboard reports on all the apps on your phone, including all of your Google apps. And we've made it really easy to revoke an app's permission directly from the dashboard. We've also added an indicator to make it clear when an app is using your camera or microphone. But let's take that a step further. If you don't want any apps to access the microphone or camera, even if you've granted them permission in the past, we've added two new toggles in quick settings so you can completely disable those sensors for every app. This next chapter of Android is focused on delightful and helpful experiences across all the devices that are connected to your phone. With a single tap, you can unlock and sign into your Chromebook when your phone is nearby. Incoming chat notifications from apps on your phone are right there in Chrome OS. To keep movie night on track, we're building TV remote features directly into your phone. You can use voice search or even type with your phone's keyboard. We're also really excited to introduce support for digital car key. Car key will allow you to lock, unlock, and start your car, all from your phone. It works with NFC and ultra wideband technology, making it super secure and easy to use. Car Key is launching this fall with select Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy smartphones. And we're working with BMW and others across the industry to bring it to their upcoming cars. Today, I'm excited to tell you about the biggest update to Wear OS ever. First, building a unified platform jointly with Samsung, focused on battery life, performance, and making it easier for developers to build great apps for the watch. Second, a whole new consumer experience, including updates to your favorite Google apps. And third, a world-class health and fitness service created by the newest addition to the Google family, Fitbit. And now we're combining the best of our two operating systems, Wear OS and Tizen into a unified platform focused on faster performance, longer battery life, and a thriving developer community. Working together, we've made apps start up to 30% faster, and animations and transitions are super smooth. By taking advantage of smaller, lower power cores, we can do things like run the heart rate sensor continuously, letting you better track your activity during the day and your sleep overnight, while giving you plenty of battery to spare for the next day. This combined platform isn't just for Google and Samsung. It will continue to be available for all device makers, which means developers can build apps with a single set of APIs and reach millions of consumers all over the world through the Google Play Store. First, our new navigation system makes it faster than ever to get things done on your watch. No matter what you're doing, you can access shortcuts to important functions like instantly switching to another app, Thanks to the new Tiles API, any developer can create one, giving people many more ways to customize their home screen carousel. We've also been hard at work revamping the wearables app experience with a material design update and expanded capabilities, starting with your favorite ones from Google. There are two additional areas of research where AI will have long-term impact. We call it Project Starline. First, using high-resolution cameras and custom-built depth sensors we capture your shape and appearance from multiple perspectives, and then fuse them together to create an extremely detailed, real-time 3D model. To send this 3D imagery over existing networks, we developed novel compression and streaming algorithms that reduce the data by a factor of more than 100. And we have developed a breakthrough light field display 
that shows you the realistic representation of someone sitting right in front of you in three dimensions. The second area of research I want to discuss is our work in driving forward sustainability. So last year, we rolled out the world's first carbon intelligent computing platform. It automatically shifts the timing of many compute tasks to when clean power sources are most plentiful. And today I'm excited to announce we are the first company to implement carbon intelligent load shifting across both time and place within our data center network. By this time next year, we'll be shifting more than a third of non-production compute to times and places with greater availability of carbon-free energy. Over the past year, we have seen how technology can be used to help billions of people through the most difficult of times. It's made us more committed than ever to our goal of building a more helpful Google for everyone.